Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Did you know this episode comes with a free gift? It's a webinar for aspiring authors who want to learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing books. You can access this free training instantly at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 17 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Megan Bierce, author of the book, Super Commuter Couples, Staying Together When a Job Keeps You Apart. How does a couple stay connected when living apart for days or weeks in their norm? Through interviews and stories, Bierce provides insightful tips and strategies for creating a successful super commuter relationship Midwest, and received a Midwest Book Award Silver Medal. Megan Bierce is a therapist, speaker, and author. She is sought after, she's a sought-after expert on the super commuting trend and has been interviewed by several media outlets, including the BBC, Forbes, the CBS Evening News, HuffPost Live, and Today. Again, her book is called Super Commuter Couples, Staying Together When a Job Keeps You Apart. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 17. Well, awesome, Megan. I'm so glad to have you as a guest today. Um, so what made you what made you write this book? What why write and publish this book? This one in particular, like a lot of them, came out of personal experience. Um, about five years ago, my husband was offered a dream job and unfortunately it was located in New York and we had just moved from LA to Minneapolis and it was basically, you know, like I said, a dream chance for him. And so we entered into this community relationship where he would fly every Monday to New York, work there all week, come back on Friday. And um, we, you know, we made it work pretty well. And then all of a sudden I was like, wow, I, people would hear what we did and they'd be like, oh, I know somebody that does that or that did that. And I decided at the same time, I was also hearing that more in my therapy practice with clients. They'd say, oh, yeah, you know, by the way, my spouse travels three days a week or a week out of every month and realized that this was a trend and started interviewing people and just said, hey, how do you make this work? Why did you decide to do this? And the book came about pretty quickly. And, and really, he actually had suggested my husband to that I should write a blog post about our experience. And it turned out to be 10 pages long. And that was really the point where I said, I think I have a book here, not just a blog. So that's that's the short version of how that all came to be. Oh, that's so cool. It's so cool that it started out as a blog post, um, yeah. as an idea of a blog post. As an and idea, then you're like, yeah. That's so cool. Very cool. And so um, in your book, you interview some other people who all over the world who who, who had a similar experience. Um, what like what kind of uh, what countries did you connect with? Basically, what. How many people in different countries and which countries? Sure. It ended up being 24 people in super commuter relationships, and most of them were across the U.S., uh, California, uh, the East Coast, Minnesota, the Midwest. But then I also was able to interview uh, a couple, the husband of somebody in South Africa, and then a woman who and her husband were living in Costa Rica, and then he ended up super committing back to Southern California. So it was a a pretty wide range of people, and then at the same time, it was also a wide range of careers. I interviewed military couples. I interviewed like consultant sort of jobs, um, oil pipeline situations, and then people that just like us said, "Hey, you know, we we need to do this because it makes the most sense." And so it wasn't necessarily tied to an industry norm. Oh, that's yeah, that's a good point. So, um, so like how. So, so you guys decided to stay in in Minnesota. Is it because just were you like setting down roots and you just didn't want to pick up and go again? Or that was one piece of it. I grew up in Minnesota, and like I said, we had just moved back to Los, from Los Angeles, and we had just purchased a house. Our kids were real little; they were one and three at the time, and my whole family was here, so I had a, a real big built-in support network, and. Um, it was 2010 and the economy still wasn't very stable. And so one of our concerns was, you know, what happens if we figure out a way to move to New York and then the job, you know, is cut or he doesn't like it or you know, we'd be back, you know, renting a place in New Jersey. Or, so there were so many what ifs that weren't very um, reassuring that we felt like by trying out the super commute, we agreed to do it for a year. Um, 
that that would be the best option to see if that's something we really did want to pursue to move out there. And we decided that it just made sense for us to stay, just given how much he works at his job. And like I said, my family and friends are here. I grew up here. And a big piece, which happens with a lot of couples in this situation, is because we're a dual career couple, it would not be very easy for me to continue my career if we moved. I'm a licensed therapist, and you have to be mm-hmm. licensed in the state you live in. So I would have to go through that process again for a third time, and that wasn't really something I was excited about doing. And I think that happens with a lot of people. You know, the spouse may not be able to find a job very easily or they really like their job. And so they're not willing to necessarily give it up, at least initially. And so super commute becomes an option for trying it out and seeing what happens. Or sometimes there are situations where it's a short term assignment. A lot of times in order to move up in a company, you have to move around the country. And if kids are in sports or really involved in, you know, whatever, they may not be as willing to pull them out of a really good school district or kind of uproot everybody for a temporary situation. Wow. So you, so the term super commuter, is that, is that, is that a a term that you coined or is that a common term? No, I didn't coin it. It's a, it's a common term. It's used, um, Really, technically, if you find the definition, it, it usually refers to somebody whose commute is 90 miles or more, which um, I think is really just an arbitrary way for them to start counting them, you know, census-wise, data-wise. I mm-hmm. kind of expand it to apply to any couple who finds themselves away from their family due to their work demands. So I kind of expand it a little bit. At the 